welcome again students to this new lecture it is under the title of roles of the components of the cell membrane in this lecture we will be explaining the rules for the three main uh, factors components of the cell membrane the phospholipids the cholesterol the glycolipids and glycoproteins so we will explain explain briefly the role of every one of those components let's start with the phospholipids what are phospholipids the phospholipids they are the major components that constitute the phospholipid by layer the cell membrane okay this is the phospholipid as you can see this is one phospholipid this is another one phospholipid attached below it so here we have two layers of phospholipids the phospholipids they prevent passing of polar substances and polar substances means hydrophilic substances substances that love water for example if we have sugars and amino acids and proteins are kept inside the cell they cannot leave the cell because they are polar and don't forget that here in the middle of the phospholipid uh, membrane i have a hydrophobic zone so this region here which is the red one which is uh, labeled by this alarm sign it means that those polar substances cannot pass there because they are hydrophilic and this area is hydrophobic so this is good for the cell why because it will keep those useful substances kept within it however if unwanted polar substances want to enter the cell also they cannot pass because of the different nature of polar hydrophilic and the hydrophobic zone so phospholipids they prevent the useful polar substances from moving out and prevent the toxic uh, polar substances from moving inside the cell and all of those happening because of the difference in the nature in the hydrophobic and hydrophilic natures between the phospholipid and those molecules the second component i you explain is the cholesterol cholesterol it's a major component of the cell membrane it maintains the fluidity of the membrane okay for example we have two cases low and high temperature now this is the cell membrane and the cholesterol molecules are those green molecules that you can see them here so they are embedded within the uh, phospholipid bilayer they are in the hydrophobic zone okay this means that they have a hydrophobic nature or else they cannot embed here in this area at low temperature the cell membrane phospholipids try to aggregate toward each other like this way here phospholipids try will try to get in uh, direct contact with each other and this is something logically at low temperature uh, things try to get much more closer much more uh, less volume okay they aggregate now this will decrease the fluidity of the cell membrane and this is negative thing for the cell so the cholesterol will push up as you can see here they prevent the aggregation of the phospholipids so cholesterol it maintains the fluidity of the cell membrane at low temperature now at high temperature we know that high temperature uh, things tend tends to expand for example like an ice cube when you uh, expose it to high temperature it will melt because it will molecules inside it they get uh, far away from each other so the same thing here the phospholipids will tend to go away from each other so this will increase the fluidity of the cell membrane but to a very high extent it will increase the fluidity of the cell membrane to a level that must not be reached that's why the cholesterol they oppose the phospholipids so as you can see cholesterol is always opposing the way of action of phospholipids here it's opposing the phospholipids it's preventing phospholipids from sliding apart it aggregate them together maintaining the fluidity okay so this is regarding cholesterol so the first thing we took the phospholipids they prevent polar molecules from moving in and out cholesterol it maintains the fluidity of the cell membrane at high and low temperature now let's talk about glycolipids and glycoproteins what are glycolipids glycolipids as you can see 
they are when the phospholipid is connected to group of sugars those are sugars okay uh, they have uh, six angles some they have five angles pentoses and hexoses however sometimes proteins may be present on the surface and connected to lipids they are called the glycoproteins glycolipids they serve as signaling receptor we know that cells they send signals to each other okay and those signals they can be either uh, neural through the nervous system or through the endocrine system like hormones so the hormone is a chemical messenger that deliver a message from one cell to another suppose that here we have a hormone okay a hormone is delivering message to this cell here this is the hormone this hormone will bind to this glycoprotein here. when it binds to this glycoprotein the message will be delivered into the cytoplasm so a secondary message this secondary message it's the message that will be delivered to the part of the cell where the message message must reach for example to the nucleus to the golgi body and so on so this message could not be delivered without binding of the hormone to the glycoprotein or to the glycolipid so glycolipids and glycoproteins they serve as signaling receptors the second job is that they uh, act as a receptor for endocytosis What's the meaning of endocytosis is when the cell engulf and digest something large like a bacteria for example or like another uh, dead cell okay uh, for example here as you can see this is a receptor and those unwanted molecules they are when they attach to the receptor for example this star imagine it as a bacteria or something uh, harmful it must be digested it will attach to the receptor once it's catched by this receptor it will be engulfed inside through a vesicle and this vesicle will fuse with the lysosome as we took in section one and the lysosome will kill this and digest this thing unwanted thing okay so this all happens because of binding of the uh, unwanted digested things with the receptors and the receptors are glycolipids and glycoproteins they also serve as receptors for cell adhesion cell adhesion is when the cells they bind to each other in a tiny way to prevent breaking up for example many cells they need to be very fine in order to prevent leakage of fluids like the skin cells like the intestinal cells and so on this cell on the left side is tightly bound, bound to the cell on the right side because of the glycoproteins and the glycolipids that combine together making cell adhesion so the cell adhesion is when two cells they connect in a tiny way to each other uh, through receptors uh, that are made of glycolipids and glycoproteins without those receptors those cells will separate and there will be leakage of fluids between them another role for glycolipids and glycoproteins they serve as markers look let's look here at this slide we know that we have uh, a blood group system blood group a blood group b and blood group o and blood group a now how do we know how does the body recognize its blood group type there are markers okay on the cell surface on the surface of red blood cells those markers they are glycolipids okay so they are sugars connected to the phospholipid cell membrane okay blood group o as you can see we have a different combination of sugars than the combination of sugars of blood group a and a different combination of blood group b now you probably might ask why the blood group a b is not shown because in blood group a b this marker and that marker are present together okay so here when those markers that are made of sugars they indicate the blood type of this person because of markers so the markers they mark the blood group type of the person according to those markers okay so this is regarding the role for the major components of the cell membrane 